Hey everyone! In this video you will learn how to create and texture low poly models. We'll be creating this cute low poly pickup truck and posting it on Sketchfab in just 15 minutes. This tutorial is for beginners or for 3D artists who have some prior experience but want to pick up a new skill or a new style. If you're new to Blockbench, it's a 3D modeling software designed to create low poly models with pixel art textures. It's free and open source and you can download it from blockbench.net. Once you open up Blockbench, you'll be greeted by the start screen, where you can pick a format for your model. Since this will be a low poly model, we'll pick generic model. In the project settings, we'll just enter the project name. The other fields are not important right now. Now we're in the workspace. The center area is a 3D viewport. You can navigate using left and right mouse button or using the middle mouse button, depending on your setting. The panel on the right is the outliner. It displays the structure of your model. I like to create my models inside a root group so that I can animate it easier later on. Inside that group, we create a new mesh. Select the shape that is closest to the model you want to create. For example, when you want to create a pencil, select the cylinder shape. Casts are mostly boxy, so we'll select the cuboid shape to get started. For meshes, there are four selection modes. By default, you select entire elements. Face mode lets you select faces. Edge mode selects edges and vertex mode selects individual corner points. When you hold shift, you can select multiple and you can hold alt to select an entire loop around the mesh. Let's select the faces and move them outwards to give the mesh the rough size of a car. Let's also move it up a bit for some ground clearance. Okay, the next step is to detail the shape a bit more and to add some wheel arches. For that, we'll split up the shape into multiple sections. Select the top face, then press loop cut in the top toolbar. In the bottom window, we can select the orientation for the loop cut. Here we can also change the loop cut offsets, or we can move it, or just enter the position here in the panel in the right sidebar. In total, we'll add four loop cuts, two for each wheel arch, which you'll see in a minute. With the four vertical loop cuts evenly spaced out around the spots where the wheels will be, we can add a new horizontal loop cut. This one will define the upper end of the wheel arches. Now let's also add two sideways loop cuts that divide the shape into three areas. This will allow us later on to give the front of the vehicle some shape. Now that the body is divided, we can remove the faces inside the wheel arches. Hold shift to select both faces, then right click and delete. You can also use delete on your keyboard. I'm using the Screencast Keys plugin in Blockbench, which displays keyboard shortcuts at the bottom of your screen. So if you're wondering what key I'm pressing and you're using a default key map, you can just check there. Now we'll add a little angle to the wheel arches. Select the center bottom faces and use the resize tool to resize them on the Z axis. We'll also do this for the front and rear bumper. For those, just hold down Alt to only resize one side at a time. Now the wheel arches are still hollow, so we need to fill them with faces. You can simply add a new face by extruding an edge. Let's select the bottom of the fender here and extrude it using the button in the toolbar. You can also press Shift E. By default, it extrudes to the outside, but we can drag it to the inside so that it lines up with the other side. Now we can connect the top edge and the bottom edge. To create a face between the selected edges, Open the context menu and select create face or edge, or simply press shift and F. We can close the front side the same way, as well as the back side. Let's quickly do this for all four wheel arches. Okay, now to the cab. We'll select the center faces and extrude them up. It should probably be a bit longer. Okay, let's extrude it then move it up to the correct height. Then select the front edge and move it back a bit to slant the windscreen. The rear wheels feel like they are a bit close to the cap, so let's select the faces around them and move them back by a pixel. Okay, now let's give the front side some shape and make it a bit less boxy. Select the corner edges and move them back. Then also do the same for the other side. Also take the top edge and move it down a bit. 
then move the second edge in the same direction to give the hood a nice curvature. Now let's do the truck bed. Move this edge towards the back so that, that you end up with a nice big rectangle in the middle. Stretch the rectangle to the sides, leaving an evenly spaced border around it. Then extrude it, but again, instead of moving it up, lower it into the model. At some point you will hit the wheels, so stop just before that. Okay, that pretty much looks like the body of a truck already. Now we'll move on to the wheels. We could of course make them part of this mesh, but let's actually make them a separate part and pack it into a group so that we can animate it later on. Groups essentially make up the rig of the model. Inside that group create a new mesh. We'll select a cylinder shape and give it a diameter of maybe 5, a height of 3 and 8 sides. Okay, that's a bit small, but don't worry, we can scale it up later. See the little plane in the center of the resize tool? You can drag them to resize the object not only on one axis, but on two at the same time. Now I'm going to drag a rectangle to select all the faces on the tire at once. You can do this so that you rotate the geometry, not the mesh itself. Use the rotate tool to rotate the wheel into an upright position. Then move it to the correct location and adjust the size. By the way, you can see the movement and rotation offset here at the bottom center of the screen. Rotate the tire by 22.5 degrees so that the flat side lines up with the ground. The colorful thing here at the bottom right of the viewport is called the Orbit Gizmo. Click on one of the red dots to get a flat side view of the model. That way you can align the tire with the ground much more easily. In object selection mode move the tire so that it is flat with the ground. Now let's detail the wheel. Select the outer side of the wheel. Hold down ALT to select an entire loop at once. Then click INSERT in the top toolbar. Let's increase the offset a bit and again extrude it and move it to the inside by one pixel. I realized that I used the wrong name for the wheel group, so I'll change it to left. In order to have it work correctly with animations, you need to set up the pivot point for the bone. Select the pivot tool by pressing P or select it from the toolbar. Then adjust the pivot point to the center of the wheel. What you can also do to make your life easier is to use the center pivot button, which will automatically center the pivot point. Once you are happy with the wheel, you can copy it to all four sides. Right click and duplicate the group or press Ctrl D, then go to Transform, Flip, Flip X. You will see that Blockbench has automatically flipped the group to the other side and changed the name of the bone from left to right. Now let's duplicate this one again and move it to the rear axle. And make sure that the name is rear instead of front. Then simply repeat for the other side. The final part we will add is the side mirror. Let's start off again with the cuboid. Switch to object selection mode and move it roughly to the right position. Select the sides and move them in to get the size right. Then select the outer front edge and move it back to slant the front side. Then select the opposite edge and move it to the back to angle the mirror towards the driver. Now we'll add the mount. So first move it out by a pixel, then make a loop cut through it. Select the inner bottom face and extrude it so that it lines up with the vehicle. Then change the shape a bit. I'll rename it to mirror underscore left, move it to the top, Ctrl D to duplicate, and go to transform, flip, flip X, and flip the copy to the other side. Okay, let's go over texturing now. 3D models are textured with a flat 2D image, out of which different parts are used for different sides on the model. The process of setting up where each part of the model is on the texture sheet is called UV mapping. Now usually that's a pretty annoying process, especially on pixel art textures, because you have to lay out the faces and make sure that the pixels are not stretched in any direction, that they all have the same density and that the faces line up with each other, while also making sure they are efficiently laid out on the texture. Blockbench for the most part removes that step, because it can automatically generate the UV map along with the texture for your entire model. To do that, just press the Create Texture button in the Textures panel here on the sidebar. Enter a name for the texture here. You can leave most of the options at default for now, but we'll enable padding so that we have more room in the UV map to adjust it if something doesn't quite line up how we want. If you are curious what the other options do, just hover over the question mark here on the side to get a description. 
then press confirm and the UV map in template texture is generated and applied to the model and you can start painting. But before we do that, let's go over the seam tool real quick. I don't think we'll need any seams on this particular model, but on some models it can definitely help. As you can see here, the entire left side of the truck is one UV island. But if for example you wanted the windows section to be mapped differently, just select the seam tool from the toolbar and select the edge that separates the window from the rest. By default each edge will connect to neighboring faces automatically, but if you select divide here, it will force the template generator to divide it and similarly join will force to connect the faces. You can also double click on an edge to cycle between the three modes. This model doesn't need any seams, so we'll just generate the template without. Okay, one thing we should adjust before painting is the front side. As you can see, the border on one side is smaller than on the other side. So let's navigate to the correct spot in the UV editor here in the top left. You can zoom in by holding control and scrolling and you can pan with your middle mouse button. Drag with your left mouse button to select the left side of the UV map. Then grab one of the points and move it to the side to align with the pixels. You can hold down shift to snap it exactly to the pixel grid. We should also adjust the other edges on the front side. In order to better see where each pixel is, click view mode in the top right corner of the viewport and select UV preview. This will display your texture as if it was a checkerboard pattern. Now select the UV point on the other edges and repeat the adjustment. And then do the same for the other side, which is a bit harder to see, but there it is. We don't need to do it on the left side since it's already aligned there. Now let's start painting the model. First of all, switch to paint mode. That will set up the interface for texture painting. Let's pick a simple red color for the body of the truck. A very practical tool for painting models, especially for vehicles, is mirror painting. Enable it using the button in the toolbar. If your model is properly centered on the x-axis, it will mirror all your brush strokes and paint tool edits across to the other side. So if we draw something here, the same thing will appear on the other side. To get the base color set up, we will use the fill tool and set the fill mode to element. That will fill all the faces of the element with the color at once. Now we just need to go over all the parts and color them in. After that we can start working on the details and shading. I've sped up the video here since it's basically just pixel art but in 3D and that's not really what this video is about. If you want to learn more about pixel art there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube that go in depth about shading, colors and pixel art techniques. texture done, that means the model is finished. Cute, right? With these modeling techniques, you should have a good foundation to create other types of models as well. We'll now quickly go over how to upload the model to Sketchfab to share it there. Sketchfab is sort of like the YouTube of 3D models. Just go to File, Export and Upload to Sketchfab. In this dialog, you can enter the metadata for your model. Also make sure to follow these instructions to insert the access token from your Sketchfab account. Okay, we'll name the model Low Poly Truck, select Cars and Vehicles as a category and just take these default generator tags. These look good. You can also add a description if you want. Make sure Draft is enabled, then press Confirm. Once the model is done uploading, go to Sketchfab and click Edit 3D Settings. Here you can adjust the display parameters of the model, like the lighting and background. For example, you can switch to the Lighting tab and enable Ground Shadow, which looks like this or you can switch to baked AO if you like. Once you are happy, press save settings and publish, then you can share your model. So that's it. That's the low poly truck modeled, textured and uploaded. I hope the video has been helpful. This was how to create a low poly truck in Blockbench. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around on the Blockbench community discord server.